Good morning and welcome. Welcome to worship for this Sunday, January 16th. Now you may be confused and maybe I am a little bit too. Let me explain. So I record a lot of the service, especially the introduction, uh, pre-recorded. It's not live, it's pre-recorded. And I did so in church like I normally do, except somewhere along the line it either didn't record or the recording was lost. And so I went to put the service together. I couldn't find that. Where am I? I'm in my home in New York. I'm here today for the uh, Buffalo Bills playoff game, my first playoff game. I took the train out. I'm flying back in Sunday morning, so I, I'm going to be in church. I'm going to be right there. Uh, but we've got the service to do. we got the service to put together, so I apologize for the, uh, for the casual nature of this uh, broadcast. It's going to look normal when we get uh, to where we need to go. A couple of announcements going forward um, uh, for Sunday in February. Let me check the date on that just so that I know. It's uh, February... Uh, Six, we're going to have a Dickinson in the pulpit, Pastor uh, Pastor uh, Pastor Dickinson from St. Louis, um, the son of Richard Dickinson, the nephew of Moses Dickinson, our founder. I know you'll enjoy that. That'll be online the next week, but if you want to see him live, uh, come on in and come and join us. I know you won't uh, you won't want to miss that if at all possible. Uh, our big anniversary celebration on February twentieth. Uh, we're having discussions on that with. COVID cases the way they are, and with uh, the weather the way it is, we're, we're debating whether to put off the big celebration till April. So keep the 20th in your calendar. We're still going to do something special that day, but uh, we might be putting off the big celebration. So uh, just stay tuned, and we'll figure that out. Uh, as always, our order of service is found right there on the screen. So uh, simply follow along as we begin our day and our week with God. Let's begin. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sin to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a call and ordained servant of Christ, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One more quick note of announcement before the choir. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Martin Luther King Day, and uh, our MLK service with our uh, Chicago Land Lutherans will be held at uh, St. Paul Church and School on Menard Street in the Austin neighborhood of Chicago. They have a YouTube channel where it will be live streamed. Uh, look on Facebook, look at our social media for the link to that. We now hear from our choir.
Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 43. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Sheba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give men in exchange for you, in, in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and named. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were in expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, and that he locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when John had also been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our sermon hymn is Baptized into Your Name Most Holy. Please sing along. Baptized into your name most holy, O Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I claim a place, though weak and lowly, among your saints, your chosen host. Buried with Christ and dead to sin, your spirit now shall live within. My loving Father, hear you take me to be henceforth your child and heir. My faithful Savior, hear you make me the fruit of all your sorrows share. O Holy Spirit, comfort me when threatening clouds around I see. My faithful God, you fail me never. Your promise surely will endure. 
O oh, cast me not away forever, if words and deeds become impure. Have mercy when I come defiled, forgive, lift up, restore your child. All that I am and love most dearly, receive it all, O oh Lord, from me. Let me confess my faith sincerely, help me your faithful child to be. Let nothing that I am or own serve any will but yours alone. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Baptism is what we celebrate today, and it is a Lutheran distinctive. Lutheran, Episcopalian, Roman Catholic, we value baptism greatly. We baptize infants, we baptize babies, we baptize grown-ups, we baptize all people. We also baptize with even a little bit of water. We believe and teach that it is not the amount of water that matters, but the fact that it is water and that God can work even through little droplets. Case in point, when I was in Baltimore serving my vicarage or my internship year, I was serving in a neighborhood not unlike some of the roughest parts of, of Englewood, for example. So, rough neighborhood. The church that I was at, St. Thomas Lutheran Church, was... Uh, was running an after-school program for kids in the neighborhood there, and uh, this happened before I came. But there was a shooting, broad daylight, and this young girl, probably about 10, 11 years old, got caught in the crosshairs. The pastor there, he uh, first thing he did was called 911. Second thing he did, well, first thing he did is make sure that all the other kids that were with him were safe. They called 911, and then he rushed out into the street to be with that girl. Put a cushion on her head as she waited for the paramedics. Well, they were on the ground. She, he asked her, have you been baptized? No, I haven't little bottle of water in the pocket of his vest, took it out. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's not the amount of water that matters if that child needed to be baptized by immersion. That little emergency baptism in the street would make no difference. But God works even through a little water to accomplish a great thing. The girl was okay, by the way. She was fine. Just a little flesh wound there, but still an incredibly traumatic experience. But she came out of it even with a gift. The gift of holy baptism, the gift of the forgiveness of sins, the gift in which Christ's death on the cross was made applicable and made personal to her through the waters of holy baptism. Man meant for evil, God meant for good. And her life was changed that day, even at the corner of Ramsey and Pulaski in Baltimore, Maryland. God's always been working through water in Holy Scripture. There was water at the beginning. God separated the waters from the dry land. Water gives us life. We all need it. Even the waters from the snow that we see outside may not be much, much use to us here in the city, but you get out into farm country, into the farmlands, and it makes a big difference to those farmers. That water will in spring melt and will irrigate the land and will save farmers a lot of money on their water bills. And if they have a well, and most do have wells, it'll keep the well from drying up later on. Water and life go hand in hand. 
But what it could also be very destructive. See that in two Bible stories. The story of Noah's flood, first of all, that's a big deal there. God used those waters to carry those eight righteous people to safety and thus preserve the human race and preserve the animal kingdom. Many people did perish in that flood. Water gives life, but water can also be destructive. The other case that we see that hinted at in this morning's Old Testament lesson was during the Exodus. The people of God had just left Egypt. No, those words, let my people go, Pharaoh said no over and over and over again, and he finally relented. But his heart was hardened once again, and he sent his troops out after them. God caused the Red Sea to part, and the people walked across on dry land. The minions of Pharaoh, and the wicked king himself, the might of that water crashing back down, were not brought across to safety. It's kind of a grim and a grisly story, but it does remind us that there are consequences to sin. There are consequences to wickedness and unrepentance. And Pharaoh received those consequences. Take a look at our Old Testament lesson from Isaiah chapter 43. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, by the way, Jacob and Israel, one in the same... Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and from Israel we get the name of God's people. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. These are beautiful words, aren't they? It shows us the promises that God gives us when we go through tough times, and we have known those tough times this year. Right now, we don't have a lot of people in church this Sunday. We've had tough times out on our streets with this ice. And you know something? I said this, folks coming in. Our sidewalks here at Resurrection are the only clear sidewalks in Princeton Park right now. Everyone else is walking on the streets until they can come to Resurrection sidewalks so they can walk on non-slick ground. But there are a lot of people who are at home today because it is too icy for them and their older bones might not be able to stand a slip and fall. Frankly, I'm aching because of the slip and fall I took this morning and cleaned it off. But nonetheless, God preserves. And we're dealing with Omicron. With this variant of COVID, that while not very dangerous or deadly, is still transmissible and virulent. And a lot of people are worried and scared once again. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. Water gives life. Water is also destructive. Fire gives life. Without fire, we'd be very, very cold today. There's a fire burning in this building, and I'm not just talking about our candles. I'm talking about downstairs in the boiler. A fire is roaring, giving us heat in this building. Remember about a month ago when we didn't have heat in here? Ooh, boy, were we cold. Fire gives life. Fire can also be very destructive. The brick here, 
won't catch fire easily, but we got a wooden ceiling here. Wildfires in parts of this country wreak havoc. My best friend is a pastor in California. And when they have wildfires out there, it doesn't really come near his church. But especially during this past year when they had to worship outside because of COVID and because of California's restrictions, they had to cancel church. Not because the wildfire was coming near, but because the smoke just made it so difficult to breathe when you were outside. The Netflix series, The Crown, talks about, uh, in one of their episodes, the smog that took place in London in the early 1950s. That was due to all this burning of coal and heavy uh, things to heat and to give electricity to the United Kingdom. Fire gives life. Fire brings destruction. Water gives life. Water brings destruction. And yet, when we go through those destructive forces of water and fire, be they literal or metaphorical, because we've been through the flames this year, we've been through the flood waters this year, we've felt them coming up all around us. And maybe we've been scared. Maybe we've doubted whether God has been there. Maybe if you send your husband off on a day of dangerous work, you feel those floodwaters. Maybe if you're going to work in a rough situation, you feel that fire. You feel those flames and yet... God is with you. The water shall not overwhelm you. You won't be burned. The flames shall not consume you. It might make you stronger. Fire also is used to refine. You expose iron to that blast of hot, fiery air. And it creates the alloy steel. Strong and even malleable. Be able to shape it into extraordinary things. For God says, I am the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, I am with you. We need to hear words like this. Human beings, children, need to hear these three words. I love you. You are loved. You are precious. If a kid grows up, not hearing those words, the child's development is stilted and stunted. But we, grown ups, need to hear those words too. We need to know that there's someone out there who loves us, who cares for us, who's on our side. Imagine going through life alone. Imagine going through life with no one there to tell you that you're loved, that you're valued, that you're precious. A good many of you are widows. You had that companion with you over the course of many years telling you those words demonstrating his love for you each and every day. One of the losses that someone feels when they lose a spouse is knowing that those words, that presence of love, is no longer with them in the same way. That spouse that husband is 
in the presence of incarnate love this day. In the presence of God, his glory, his love, his being on into eternity. And we'll be there too, but where does that leave us now? Perhaps as we walk in the midst of grief, perhaps even years, decades after our spouse, our beloved partner has gone, And in those moments when we still miss those words, those actions that speak and that live, those words, I love you, and you are precious. That's what this Old Testament lesson is for this day. Even when we lose that loved one. You are still loved. Even when we close that casket for the last time, even when the last bit of dirt goes over that coffin, you are still precious. And I say this because we need to hear it. When we walk alone, when we walk without that partner, when we walk without that person who gives us love, sometimes we just need to hear those words out loud again. You are loved. You are precious. And you are not alone. This day or any day. The God who formed you is still with you. As he is with your husband, your wife, this day. And as you will be with them one day. Fear not. I am with you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. God demonstrates his love in this. While we were still sinners, while we were still wandering in a land of death, Christ died for us. God demonstrates his love in that while we are walking through a land of sorrow and a land of tears, Christ died for us. God gave someone in exchange for our life to pay that ransom. His name is Jesus Christ, Son of God. He does not leave you alone this day, for you are precious. So precious that he would send his son for you. We're called to remember this today in baptism. I are telling the kids, baptism is the way that God makes Christ's death applicable to us. It's physical. It's physical and as wet as water. When you take that shower, when you wash your hands, and yeah, we are washing our hands a little bit more over these past couple of years than perhaps we were before, take that time to remember your baptism. Even if it happened when you were a little baby, If it happened when you were an adult, you can still remember it. Remember how God is with you. Remember the promises that he makes to you in baptism, that he will be with you. That the Holy Spirit descends upon you. That God calls you, just as he calls Jesus, his beloved son, his beloved daughter. That you remain precious in his sight this day. These cold icy, slippery winter days and these scary COVID days. These days where maybe you walk in mourning, missing that special someone that you spent so many years with. And those days when the weight of the waters and the fire feels like it's crushing you. 
on a day like this, remember that you are precious. Remember that you are loved. No matter what you've done, no matter what's in your past, no matter what you've lost or what you've gained, your love today. Remember that love. Remember your baptism. In those moments when the sadness and the sorrow seems to overwhelm and overcome you. Remember that God is on your side. You're saved through Christ. You never walk alone. For you have been brought to peace with God. A peace which passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have fulfilled all righteousness in the baptism of your beloved Son. As we have received this righteousness by our, baptized, by our baptism into him, make us bold in faith and fervent in love, that we may live out heavenly lives even in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve the family, O God, especially all Christian homes. Turn husband and wife toward one another in love. Equip fathers and mothers for their holy duty as teachers of the faith. And preserve all children in the saving faith and certain promises of their baptism unto life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you break the wicked with your rod for the sake of your beloved children. Help us at all times to serve you with fear and to seek refuge always in the kingdom of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you sent your Son to serve your people and deliver them from sin and death. Because we long for your salvation, bring us out of our afflictions and uphold all those bruised in spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you manifested yourself with the Holy Spirit in the fullness of grace at the baptism of your dear Son. With your voice, you directed us to the one who has borne our sins, that we may receive grace and forgiveness. Keep us, we implore you, in the true faith. Since we have been baptized in accordance with your command and at the example of, and at the example of your Son, strengthen our faith by your Holy Spirit and lead us to everlasting life and salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn this day is What Wondrous Love Is This? Please sing along. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down beneath God's righteous frown, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul, for my soul. Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing. To God and to the Lamb, who is the great I am. While millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing. While millions join the theme, I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing his love for me. And through eternity I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity I'll sing on.